Let's try this. Maybe here. Fits, I think. goes here. Maybe on this side. Finally, just like the picture. Smile a bit wider. Like this. You were meant to smile, not bear your teeth. No, still wrong. Smile like you did when Papa agreed we could marry. Please? Hmm? You're useless. I can tell something's bothering you. Well, I've a bit of work I should see to. Again? Old Geard, we agreed not to keep any secrets from one another. We promised. Forgive me. I don't wish to discuss this. All geared. All geared. Master von Everick study. Here he immersed himself in the arcane arts. Pentagram's here to bind summoned beings. Lines aren't all clear, though. Need chalk to fix them, then I can set out the candles. Beeswax candles. Blood pacts. Or on foreign presences. Hmm. The tenor was depressing and gloomy in the winter. I bet. <sighs> Black magic. That should do it. Now for the candles. Let's try this. Nothing. How about this? Come back! We must talk! Go away. I wish to be alone. Not this time. Come out at once! Leave me be. I merely want to work in peace.
What other spell must I use, damn it? I've tried them all. I wish to end our pact. I summon thee! father so this is when he started smoking a beer tankard but there was drink in it to the last drop probably not right so that's how he whiled away the long winter evenings probably not right Contract between Iris and Olgierd. Probably not right. Her father must have been holding the contract. Furthermore, it is agreed that Iris shall be accorded the respect she is owed, that you shall heed her counsel and requests, and. Get to the point, father. My patience runs thin. Gladly. On Iris's request, I declare this marriage null and void. You vowed to remain with me till death do us part. And I've held to my vow. The old geared I married is no more. Breaking a word once given does not come that easy. Believe me, you shall stay here. Forever. Enough. You will not command us. You will. Father. Father. No. Servant. Take this carcass and feed it to the beasts. Ceased to be human. Though he still loved his wife. No, he merely remembered that he should love her. Let's go upstairs. I remember. We spent much time together here, the three of us. A platter. In silence. Mm. We'll take our places. The same as then. A large clay You bowl. do the rest. Small bowl. For soup, maybe. Claw scratches. Animal hair. Single play 
setting. No others on the table. Perfect match. This was yours. There we go. You actually ate from these bowls? Of course not. I already told you, we're not animals. But the caretaker would set them out all the same, as ordered. Another monstrosity. I begged you to stop this. Those two are too, too many as it is. The dog and cat keep you company. This one will protect you, care for the house, no matter what happens. Before I wished to know what was going on in that head of yours, I thought perhaps I could help. Now, I care not the slightest what you think or how you feel. I... feel nothing. Just as I no longer know if I still hate you. Go, Olgir. I want you out of my sight. Olgir von Everick failed to understand we'd never be able to replace him. His spectre now casts a shadow over Lady Iris's every remembrance. We're almost at our journey's end. What's there? Iris von Everick's greatest fear. My dearest wife, letters from Old Geard to Iris, were I only as skilled with words as I am with my blade, especially now, when an icy fort grips my heart. I see how you look at me, and I see you with her. I cannot help you. But I believe I can cease harming you. This letter and this rose are my farewell. May you live in health and remember but the good times, Olgierd. You're not him. 
Wait, I want to talk. Not here. Not in this place. I'm sorry. I mistook you for another. For Olgird? I thought he'd returned. To me. What are you? A ghost? An illusion? I am sadness. Saw you before, but you weren't yourself. And I saw you again in your memories. We've met. I don't recall. I had bad dreams. That is all I know. I've come for the violet rose Olgir gave you. On the day we saw one another for the last time. I dried it and placed it in our chamber at my bedside. I lay there for days, staring at it, until at last it crumbled into dust, as did I soon after. So, the rose is gone? Not from this world. Look, you buried my body and the flowers bloomed once more. And I, I was held in a deep, dark sleep. Only now have I awoken, just like my beautiful rose. When you placed the sketchbook on my grave, I remembered learning to draw my husband's face. Tell me, how is Olgird? Healthy? Does he fare well? Shouldn't worry about him at all. He's no longer the man you loved. So his heart remains hardened. And did... Did Olgird mention me? What did he say? Not much. But I didn't ask about you. He just sent me to retrieve the rose. The rose? The last I have left of him. His last gift. Got a feeling the rose is important to you, more than a memento. I remember so little. Yet when I think of my rose, I begin to recall what was. The world around me turns real, and I... My eyes open wide and I recognize things. Remember who I am and who I was. A friend once told me about a case like this. Could be strong emotions that bind you to the rose. Feelings we witchers call pins. They're what keeps you in this world. Like an insect pinned in a collection case. Horrible. Need to be honest. If I take the rose, you might cease to exist. As might the world you've built around you. And what will happen then? Shall I be free of the suffering, the sadness? Is it the void that awaits? I don't know. I don't wish to suffer any longer. But I fear there will be cold and darkness until... there is nothing at all.
I need the rose. Will you give it to me? It's so fragile. Look, the petal edges have turned crimson, as they were on the day I received it. The one thing missing is the single drop of dew which slid down the leaf when I took the rose in hand. Or was it blood? Because I pricked my finger. I can't remember. You know, I never did read the letter from Orgird. I didn't have to. And I needn't have kept the flower he left me. I've come to a decision. I shall give you the rose. Our service thus ends. Thank you, stranger, for freeing us. Before we go, some advice. Beware of the one called the Man of Glass. Stand in his way, and you'll meet a fate worse than death. Seek salvation in glass that can't be broken. Glass that can't be broken? So long. I'll remember you, Iris von Everek. That no longer matters. Farewell. Move it! Two points, and be quick about it. Oh, please, good sir, a bit of courtesy. So I look up, and Bob's your uncle. He downs half the barrel in one draught. Geralt, over here. Oi, wait your looks. Use the look of a man who knows how to drink. Thanks. Some other time. Hey, now. Don't make me beg. More treats! Show off. Of course I am. Wouldn't you be? 
Time's a marvelous plaything. And a great spice to use in gingerbread. So, you were listening. Indeed, occasionally I find time manipulation irresistible. Controlling it offers so many appetizing opportunities, like spiking the soup of unsavory individuals with appropriately ghastly things. Who are you, really? Gauntero Dim, also known... Not what I'm asking. Ah, so you'd rather know what it is I do. In brief, I give folk what they ask for. You might say, I simply grant their wishes. That'd be downright noble, if you didn't always demand something in return. Law of the market. I was not the one to coin the phrase, nothing comes free. You're not human, that's clear. So what are you? A demon? A djinn? Do you really wish to know? Yes. No, Geralt. You don't. This one time I shall spare you, and not grant your wish. All who have learned my true name are now either dead or have met an even worse fate. Yet I still need you. You actually control time, or is this just some conjurer's trick? What difference does it make? A big one. Hmm. Let us say, time has always fascinated me. So, I taught myself how best to use it. Why time, of all things? Geralt, there are four dimensions. Length, width, height, and time. What would you have me fall in love with? Width? Come now. So, to what do I owe the pleasure? I wanted to congratulate you. You acquitted yourself splendidly with Olgierd. In fact, You've almost satisfied your debt. Was supposed to fulfill his three wishes. Did just that. This is where you remove the brand, because we're even. Nearly. To fulfill the terms of the contract to the letter, you must do one more thing. Draw all gear to the temple of Lilvani. We never discussed that. Oh, but we did. As a man of the world, you should know that every contract contains a catch or two. Small print which, nevertheless, changes the ultimate meaning of the pact. This applies to oral contracts as well. Recall that I said, and I quote, I believe, however, that all will end well, and once it does, we three shall meet and thank one another for the voyage we shared. End quote. Mm, yeah, I remember. Fulfill your end of the bargain, and I will remove the brand. That was the last time you interrupted me while I was talking to someone. What the devil? Why is there a fly in my soup? Was waiting. Had an eye out for you. Didn't see you come in. How is it you're here? Old witcher's trick. I concentrate real, real hard, and I can control time and space. You toss this fly in my soup? No. Now listen carefully. Tell your Ataman to come to the Temple of Lilvani. It's south of here. Entrance is inside a cave. <coughs> What's the commotion? Lilvani's temple. Got it? Aye. Got it. Hold that! Your friend, the medic. She were here. Ask that you look in on her. Thanks. Good folk, did the you see? The devil walked a crooked path, his dead. heart of full of ire. No sword would lend him coin for Maybe drink, no wench would quench his fire. He soaked in blood! Witcher in the ass. No wonder folk are dropping, cursed and exed.
Viva Radovic! Shani? Oh, Geralt. Good thing you're here. What happened? Somebody break in? This? Uh, no. Just getting ready to move. What? When? when where to? Uh, not what I wanted to talk to you about. Or at least not only, but... I'm leaving, Geralt. The Eastern Front beckons. I'm Kedwin Bound. Never mentioned you'd be moving. Any intention to, either. I didn't know I would be. Found out this morning. Two soldiers came to my door, said Redania needs me again. Couldn't turn them down? Just say no? Uh, perhaps I could have. But I didn't want to. Treating the ill and wounded, it's my calling. No place I'm needed more than at the front. Can't you reconsider and stay? Geralt, what for? The wedding, the time we've spent together, it was nice. But you have your life and I have mine. We... This doesn't make sense long term. You know that as well as I do. Well, you take care of yourself. You too, Geralt. So, learn anything about Olgird? Well, I abandoned the books quickly. Decided that if I was going to learn the truth, I'd need to find someone who knows him. Find anyone? Turned out I didn't need to look far. A colleague at the Academy, an assistant to Professor Pramathine Shakeslock, claims Olgird von Everick met with the Professor multiple times. Apparently, Olgird asked the Professor to do some research. Professor got so worked up doing it, he went daffy. Started jealously guarding his notes. Wouldn't even let his assistant look at them. The Professor, where'll I find him? Here in Oxenfurt. Cloistered inside his house on Academy grounds. Mage hunters guard his door. Need to talk to this Professor. We'll go together. Redanian guards all over the Academy. Doubt you'll get in alone. Guards have never stopped me, you know that. Mm. Wound these, and I'll have to patch them up. Besides, we might run into a friend. Get inside free and easy. So how are things at the Academy oh. these days? You mean since Radovid shut it down? I mean, is it well guarded? Might be all it is. Many of the faculty fled to the far north. The braver ones stayed, but assumed the guises of tailors and laundresses. Why? Just curious. Scholars seem to have adopted mage tactics. Are they in the same bind? To Radovid, there's little difference between the two. Seems to tolerate you well enough. Because he needs me. For now. So, the Eastern Front, and then? Depends where they send me. Wherever it is, take care of yourself. Always do. So don't worry. Halt! By order of King Radovid, no one's allowed inside the Academy. Not even lecturers? No one means no one. See, you've become quite the stickler, Norbert. You were much kinder when I was patching you up. By the way, how's your knee? Fine. Dandy. As if no arrow ever struck it. Consider yourself a lucky man. Because if I'd not decided to operate, you'd be a cripple to the end of your days. <clears throat> Bruno? Hey? Maybe we ought to let her in. She's a decent lass. Not like to steal nothing. Hmm. All right. But alone. Which will draw too much attention. I'd rather not get chait from the captain on his account. Here's what we'll do. I'll go in, then help you sneak in around the back. How? Don't know, but I'll figure something out. Usually aren't nearly as many guards on the riverside. Agreed. All right, let me in.
Geralt. Psst. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Grab the line. Where'd you get the rope? Uh, long story. But we've done well. Professor Shakeslock's house is at the end of this street. Witch hunters guard the door. Doubt I'll be able to sweet talk them. Been a huge help already, Shani. Thanks. It was nothing. Really. You'd have done the same for me. If you wish to see me again before I go, I'll be at home. Packing will take some time yet. All right. Be seeing you. Cole, is that you? Leave the bed pan in the usual spot. And take the platter. I shan't be eating today. Professor Shakeslock. Who the blazes? How'd you get in? Get out. I know nothing. Don't wish to know anything. Understand? No, no, no. Out! Not gonna hurt you. That demon sent you. I'm sure of it. What demon? Feigned ignorance. <laughs> Please, you know, Gaunter Old Dim, evil incarnate. He didn't send me, but he is why I'm here. I'm a witcher. <laughs> a mutant. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Could be. Why are there guards outside your door? You a prisoner? Protective custody. That's the phrase. Protective. <laughs> when I cannot decide my own fate, cannot breathe without their permission. What do they want from you? You may not be aware, but I am one of the foremost experts on the occult. Living experts, that is. My mentor was the outstanding Professor Lionel Van... And you're cooperating with the witch hunters now? Cooperating? <laughs> As if I had a choice. They're ignorant. But not enough to ignore what I know about magic, witches... Sorceresses, what have you? Knowledge they use for barbaric ends. But that's beyond my control. Came here because I need information. Think you might be the only man who has it. Hmm, a witcher. Then it follows I needn't fear. I'm hardly a post-conjunction creature. 
What did Olgierd von Everick want from you? I curse the day I first set eyes upon the man. He appeared at my doorstep one day, offering a sack of gold were I only to find out who Gauntor O'Dim is and how to get rid of him. I agreed. Such matters are my speciality. And I needed the coin. I pored over countless tomes, delved into obscure incidents and analyzed folk legends. I went so far as to travel to Nilfgaard, the library there, where at last I hit upon the mysterious entity's trail. There are records of encounters dating back thousands of years in many cultures under many names, but always as evil incarnate. In this land, we call him Gauntor O'Dim, at times Master Mirror, or the Man of Glass. In deciphering the ancient scrawlings, I went blind. Yet I learned a great deal. For example, that he plays with his victims and thrives on pacts above all else. Seemingly harmless contracts which drive their parties to madness. Know anything else about the man? Gauntor O'Dim is no man. He is evil. Evil which assumes various forms. Forget about him or die. You're alive. Alive? Yet I live in constant fear, born of what I've learned about him. What's with the surroundings? These runes, what do they mean? They protect me. Here, evil cannot touch me. How do you know? He told me himself. He paid me a visit once. A fascinating meeting that was. I was blind already, but saw him clearly. He smiled at me. Said he was honored I'd taken such an interest in him. He wished to thank me and explained he'd taken a similar interest in me. He drew the circle and said I'd be safe within it. His way of repaying me, you see. Ever tried to leave it? If you'd heard how he said it, you'd be as certain as I am what leaving would bring. Olgierd signed one of these pacts with him. Brilliant deduction. But have you guessed why? You must know that he came from a wealthy, influential line. He must have, if the family of his betrothed accepted him. Yet did you know his fortune soured? He himself became an outcast, impoverished. Iris's family, a powerful house, could not accept this, would not marry their daughter to a nobody. Olgierd wished to elope. The further away, the better. Yet Iris refused to cut her family ties. Quite the predicament. Indeed. Their luck turned yet darker when a wandering witch mentioned a solution. A man who would grant any wish. His name, Master Mirror. The rest follows naturally. Olgird and Odin. A meeting at a crossroads. A wish. A pact signed in blood. And a price to be paid. Olgird was to sacrifice one he loved. Old Dim delights in difficult choices. He knew Olgierd loved two in this world. His betrothed and his brother, Vladimir. Olgierd chose, and soon thereafter married his beloved Iris. His fortune restored. Why was Olgierd out to get rid of Odim? He'd gotten what he wanted. Had he? <laughs> his heart had turned cold as ice. His feelings for his wife, for whom he'd sacrificed his brother, had withered. He'd lost all he'd loved. Had he wanted any of this? No. Odim grants what you wish, not what you want. All who sign a pact learn the difference and die by it. All? No way to get rid of him? Kill him, you mean? Kill evil? <laughs> no. Yet the annals tell of a man who dissolved his pact by defeating Ogdim at his own game. Meaning? Ogdim wields contracts, word traps, duels of wits. Challenge him to such a duel. He'll agree. And can be beaten. But remember, there is only ever one stake. The sole thing he truly desires. 
human souls. Odim left a mark on my face. Any way to get it off? A mark? No mention in the tomes. Strange. Unless... Unless it will disappear once your pact is fulfilled. If I challenge him, end the pact that way, will it go away? That I do not know. The one man who succeeded bore no mark. Thanks. Helped me a lot. Good. Very good. Ah, oh, to feel useful after so many years locked up, living in fear. Why, it's pleasance itself. <laughs>
spawn. Need to destroy the nests. <laughs> 